Hey guys, welcome back to Popo's Woodworks. Today, we're gonna to be, me and the guy, one of my buddies, we're gonna be building a six by eight hunting box blind. So we literally just went to Lowe's and purchased all the material, and it's, it's a whole lot, but I think, what was the total? 372. I think after tax, everything that we got, now mind you, we didn't get the plexiglass because they didn't have the size we needed, and we don't have enough material to do the ladder because we really don't know how we're gonna do that yet. But just the lumber to build the platform, the four by four post, the bracing, the whole nine was $372. So uh, I don't really have any plans for this one. We're gonna kind of make it up as we go. So we're gonna take you all along with us. Anyhow, well, let's get started. All right, as you can see here, what we have so far is I bought two by six by eight foot. They're all treated. And this is what we're gonna use for the floor base. And then of course I'll run my two by sixes in the center. And then we're, going, we're just gonna use OSB for the floor and the panels and all that. So now we have this squared out. We're gonna start screwing it together. And then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna run the, uh, the cross braces, but we are gonna run them with joist hangers. But we decided we may wanna do a trap door. So that's gonna be a little hinky. So we're gonna to have to figure out how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Well, we ended up, we're gonna do a trap door. So basically what we did is, you can see we framed this off, made it pretty, pretty good size. But what we're gonna do is these are attached and glued. And then these pieces right here are gonna go there. And then of course, this one is gonna go in the center. So in the long run, all these pieces right here are going to attach to the OSB where we're gonna cut the, the latch out. And that way, when it comes up and comes down, it's gonna sit kind of like a bed frame. It's gonna sit right on the lip of those. That way to be sturdy, and if anybody steps in the center of this when you're inside the blind, it's gonna have plenty of support and not fall through. So now, we're gonna get the OSB cut down. Of course, it's gonna take two sheets for this. And then uh, it'll make more sense once we get it together, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so when I was talking about the trap door, as you can see right here, we glued and screwed these in. And then we did the same thing to this. Now all of these are gonna rest on that. So basically, and I took a rope and put a rope in it so we can get the lid up. Now mind you, we don't have the hinges, but there's his trap door right here. Now we're gonna put the hinges, two hinges on each end there. That way, when you're getting ready to get out of it, you can grab the rope and lift it up and so on and it'll hinge back. So we'll go ahead and install the hinges and then this, the floor will finally be done. That. All right, where this thing was hitting, what we had to do is I took a chamfer bit and went back and notched this off. It took out a big chunk, and then took a belt sander, and just basically, as you can see, I took that lip down where it was hitting when it comes down. So now it comes down pretty smooth and locked right on into place. So there's the trap door, and it's pretty clean. I mean, we got the hinges right there, but that'll be in the corner of the blind, so that's not gonna be a big deal, and that's gonna be the back side of the blind where the blue line is gonna be the front. Anyhow, so now we're gonna get to making the walls. To save some money on the uh, two by fours, what we did was we bought the regular two by fours. I can't remember how many it was, maybe, uh, maybe about 10 or so. And I took them, put them on my table saw and ripped them dead in half. That way pretty much I'm gonna frame the walls and it's gonna be like two by twos. So that's what I'm doing now is just trying to lay it out and see how I'm gonna frame it. 
but I believe I'm gonna take the OSB and since it's eight foot this way, is just stack one on top of the other and then glue these and screw them together to make the wall panel. I totally forgot to film this part, but basically this is the front wall. And what I did, of course, they're two by twos where I split the two by fours in half. So a quick recap is what I did is I, I made the square and then decided how big and where I wanted my window. So from this point to this point is 36 inches. And then from the inside bottom of the floor all the way to the top is 52 inches. That gives me a 16 inch wide window. And they're this way, they're 36 inches long. So I did that on both sides. This is going to be the front wall. And this wall is seven foot tall. Now I'm going to do the back wall, maybe six and a half or six feet. But I'm going to, I'm going to bring it down because where I can do like a lean to where everything will run off the back side. So this is wall number one, and I promise you, I'll try to video us building the next one, but I gotta go to work tonight, and this was on my mind, so I figured I'd come out here and try to do this. So I got one down, we got three more to go, and we'll get those on video. So that, that's where we're at right now, and we'll get back on this in four days when I'm off again. All right, so what I'm doing here, if you can hear me, but uh, I got the front wall, this is the back wall. And of course, I made the front wall taller, made the back wall, I think maybe six, six inches shorter. That way the roof will have a lean to it. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these two built. I gotta figure out the angle that I'm gonna need when I go to build the side walls. So I'm gonna leave these, set these up, it's kind of like mocking them up. And I'm gonna get the other one and hold it from the top and come down here and find the angle that I need to do or need to cut so I, I'll know how to, what I'm gonna do with the with the drop on it so we're gonna figure that out now and then we'll get to putting the side walls together all right so here's where we're at now right there is my front wall my back wall we didn't put windows in the back wall because the where we put in the blind it's like a really thick thicket and it, that's actually the edge of the property line so we really can't worry about what's behind us. But anyhow, so we're gonna do the two windows in the front and the exact same size windows, 16 in the center, 36 wide. We're gonna put these on the side. All right, so what we're doing is, you can see where I got it sloped. This end is straight, so that's gonna sit on the bottom here. This end, I wanna say is 79 and three quarters is what I cut this center piece. And that ain't counting the uh, thickness of the, of the two by two. So 79 and three quarters, and then it slopes down. And then each slot, what I did is I just laid a two by four up there and marked it to get the angle that I cut. So each slot drops. So I think this one's like 78 and some odd change, but you know, it, I would kick out the exact measurements, but it just varies on how high you want your blind. I'm six foot four. This is final height is gonna be six foot five. That way, if I'm standing at the back of the blind, I ain't got a duck and it's almost gonna be seven foot at the top. So as you can see here, you can see that slate. I think these angles that I ended up cutting were five and a half degrees and that way they all sit. So I got them shot and glued and drying. Now for the window, as you can see here, this is gonna be at the bottom, that's gonna be the top of the window. I went ahead and cut two 16 inch pieces of scrap where I can use as a template. And I'm gonna do this on the same from the very bottom here to the bottom of that window is 36 inches high. All right, so I'm gonna glue that and shoot it from both ends. And I'm gonna use those two at 16 inches and I'm gonna glue this one, shoot it at both ends. And then of course, this is a small wall. That one, I had two braces in the center. I think we can get by with just throwing one. So I'm gonna put one more two by two in the center of each one of the windows. And then this side is gonna be done. And what we're gonna do for the next one is we're going to leave this laying on the floor on the deck and i'm going to lay out because i've already cut while i was cutting these angles i went ahead and cut that too so we're pretty much just going to lay these out over top of this whole thing and use this one as a pattern and then rock on with it and shoot it and get it done and then we'll be ready to attach the osb panels so enough talking on that one let's get to work
right here what we're doing is we laid the panels down or the osb down and we're taking our pencils and we're tracing around every one of the the studs onto the osb and the reason we're doing that is because that way when you go to put the osb back on top there's no guesswork on where your studs are you don't have to do all that measuring because some of them may be bowed and you know exactly where to put put the nails when you go to put it together but this part right here this is where the seams went together and i had the stud a little bit off center so we added those little three blocks just to basically catch both pieces so it won't be no no gap or no wobble in the stud all right so now we're laying that back down right here i'm putting the glue all around i put literally put it on every stud and so i'm running around the corners on that we're going to take the osb once i get it glued and we're going to put the osb right back on it the exact same orientation and then what you really can't see here but you you could see exactly where the where the studs are and then i take my brad and it makes this part so much simpler i just take my brad and gun and go back and shoot everywhere that there's a stud and Pretty much like I said, the brads are just there to hold it together until the glue dries. But we did go back and use roofing nails and attach it with roofing nails as well for extra stability. But it turned out easy. I mean, it just seemed like it was the simplest way to do this part. I'm just repeating the same process as before. Taking a pencil, tracing around all the 2 by 2s onto the OSB. And then once I got my marks, I moved the panel then put it all back but right here i forgot to put the glue on it so i had to take them back off and re-glue it and then once i got the glue on i threw the osb back on top and then of course shot it with the brad guns and then used the roofing nails to attach it to make it more secure the bottom part i cut off i left it four inches that way when you go to hang it when it's in the woods you got a four inch lip at the bottom that'll help you line them them panels up with the floor as you go to screw them in All right, I flip this thing over and I get it where it's, you know, kind of off the floor and I use the Sawzall to cut the window out. But basically what I did is when I cut the window out, I made sure I marked it. I marked the OSB panel piece that was cut and the frame. That way I can keep all the windows that came out of each window separate because I'm going to eventually go back and use those to, to close up the blind when it's not in use. This is the part I was really excited because I was actually going to put all the walls together and see if this thing goes together like it was supposed to. And as I'm dragging the walls out, you know, getting the sides ready, I've already got the back attached. Then it hits me right here. This is where it all hit me and it sunk in that, holy crap, I screwed up. So basically what I did is the walls are supposed to be opposite of each other, two sides, but I put the OSB on the exact same side. So in other words, I had two left side blind pieces instead of a left and a right. So I had to go back and cut all that OSB. The glue had dried. I had to cut it all off and redo it. That was fun. Lots of fun. Now this paint, I'm using one of these Wagner airless painters, I guess you call it. But I went to Lowe's and got some of the Oops paint where people got the wrong kind mixed. And they sell them pretty cheap because, I mean, it is a deer blind. It didn't have to be special. So this takes a lot of work out of painting when you have one of these things. This is what I'm going to do with the roof. I basically am, I just made it the, the size of the actual frame, which is should be the tops of every wall. And uh, the roof is going to have the pitch, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this on top of, I'm just, like this wall right here, where it pitches down. I'm going to build it to where, let me walk over here to make more sense. So when we get up there, we're going to set the roof straight down on top of all the top boards here and then i'll take some decking screws and just run it through here where it goes all the way through and grabs the roof and pulls it down and if there's any gaps i mean really doesn't matter but if there's any gaps or anything like that we'll use that spray foam that you can use to to fill in the gaps so now i'm gonna lay my plywood down and see what i have to do i think i'm gonna have to cut a piece but we're gonna lay that down and get that mounted on there now I'm installing the windows, and this is where me marking each window actually come in handy because you'll never make two cuts exactly the same. This way they all matched up, but you can tell through that open window I had some really good help. I couldn't have done it without her. She really did help me out a lot. And my camo pattern on the blind is 
when you give a couple kids a can of spray paint and let them go to town on it. But basically, we got it done, got the windows on. This thing's almost ready to put up in the air.